Hey guys, this is Dr. Rob. We're going to start with our normal test subject, and you'll see when we shine a light into her eye, her pupil, of course, constricts. And it should stay constricted for about a full 30 seconds while we're shining the light in her eye. This, of course, is to protect the retina from excessive light exposure. With our abnormal subject, what occurs is we shine the light in her eye, but her pupil, you can see, is dilated. It's much larger than the other person's. You commonly will see this in cases of adrenal fatigue. We even go ahead and we remove the light for a second and re-shine it back in her eye. And her pupil constricts, but just for a second and then opens back up. You could see it opening up there. And it does something called vacillating, meaning it opens and then it tries to close a little. You could see it, right? It's like closing, opening, closing, opening, and it kind of goes back and forth like that. Let's take a second and compare the normal to the abnormal. And you'll clearly see here the difference in the pupil size um, immediately when the light hits them. You could see the person on the left, the abnormal subject, her pupil is much larger. The person on the right, the normal subject, her pupil is much smaller in response to the light. And this again has to do with the adrenal glands. All right guys, so why does this happen? Well, it has to do with the hormone cortisol. Remember, cortisol is produced by the adrenal glands and when the adrenals are stressed, there's an overproduction of it. And what does an overproduction of cortisol do? Well, it gets us ready for fight or flight. And what do our pupils want to do when we're fighting or running away? They want to open up as wide as they can to let as much light in as they can so we could have the best visual acuity, right? So we can see the best because we're either fighting or we're flighting. We're flighting, fleeing, running, we're moving. <clears throat> so, but the question is, the majority of people that I see as patients, they're not fighting anything, they're not flighting anything. They may have gone through some significant stress or they may be going through a stress, but what I found is the majority of people, their cortisol is elevated because there's inflammation in the body. Remember, cortisol is not just your fight or flight hormone, but it's also your anti-inflammatory hormone. So when there's something producing inflammation in your body, your cortisol levels are gonna go up. And what could be producing inflammation? Well, it could be a parasite, could be a yeast, could be a fungus, could be a bacteria, uh, could be a food sensitivity, could be a toxicity, one of many, could be a heavy metal toxicity, mercury, lead, cadmium. There's a variety of things that can be. The trick is to find out what's producing inflammation in your body, because in truth, it's different for everybody. You know, in the last 20 plus years that I've been in practice, I've never had two people on the same exact holistic uh, weight loss or holistic program because it just never happens. You know, our bodies are all unique. So what are you gonna experience when your cortisol levels go up? Well, let's take a look. One, cortisol, remember, it's getting, it's getting you ready for a fight or it's getting you ready for, to handle some type of stress, right? So it wants you awake. So cortisol is gonna wake you up. Often, it's gonna interfere with your sleep cycle. Here's the interesting thing, it might wake you up, but it's not gonna give you energy because your sleep is not gonna be in as deep as it should be, or you'll wake up in the middle of the night around two or 3 a.m. and have trouble falling back to sleep. So because your sleep is not that great, you're gonna feel tired throughout the day, right? You're gonna drag in the morning time, you're gonna feel tired, you're not gonna feel like getting up. After lunch, you're gonna feel like taking a nap. In the evening, you might be more awake. So you might also feel more stressed, more anxious, more nervous. You might feel kind of depressed or melancholy. Um, you're typically gonna start to gain belly fat, so you'll gain weight around your midsection. In addition to that, cortisol can interfere with the production of thyroid hormone and the activation of thyroid hormone. In addition to that, cortisol can interfere with certain secondary sex hormones like testosterone, and as a result, we'll have a reduced sex drive. It could also be connected with food cravings like salty foods and sugary foods, but ultimately, when your cortisol levels are elevated, you're not gonna to feel too good, things are not gonna be so great. But you gotta find the underlying cause as to why they're elevated in the first place. Now, if you feel that maybe you have adrenal fatigue or some type of adrenal problems, or you feel like you have some other unresolved health or weight problem, please feel free to reach out to me no matter what it is, I'm happy to help. I'm gonna put a link down here to my free online weight loss and health evaluation, which is one of the many tools that we use in helping to detect the underlying cause to a person's health or weight issue. So if you'd like to do that, please feel free to fill that out. The link will be down here. And uh, if you like this video, please subscribe and please share it with a friend. I think there's a lot of people that could benefit specifically from this video. And I will catch you guys at the next whiteboard session. Thanks.
Please understand that this video is purely educational. I'm not asking you to run around and shine a pen light in people's eyes and blind them and try to diagnose them with elevated cortisol. That's not what I'm doing. This information is purely educational.